Welcome to this rapid review on an introduction to dynamic models. We saw in a previous video uh, the basic concept of a dynamic model, where we have different variables, different endogenous variables, and they have different values in each time period. So there would be a number of people unemployed in period 0, that would be u0, and then there's a number of people unemployed in period 1, that's u1. And we saw that in order to get a handle on a model like this, we have to get an equation called a law of motion that tells us how variables change over time. And our key law of motion for the bathtub model of unemployment was ut plus 1, I have it written here, ut plus 1 equals ut minus f of ut plus s times et. But of course, we don't want to read it like that and think of it like that. We, what we want to think when we see this equation is uh, that next period's number of people unemployed is going to be this period's number of people unemployed minus the people who have found jobs, so they're no longer unemployed, plus the people who have newly become unemployed, so they've been sort of added to the bathtub, is how we thought of it. Okay, and using this law of motion, we can calculate the future values of u based on previous values of u. So for instance, we calculated u1 based on u0 and e0. And we actually did that for a whole series of u. We found u0, we were given u0 and we found u1, u2, u3. And we saw that the values kept decreasing. The further forward in time we went, the lower and lower u got. And then we hypothesized, you know, maybe this is a trend. Um, it could go on forever, I guess. We could just continually have lower and lower unemployment. But it seems like most likely this is headed somewhere it's headed towards what we could call a steady state. And a steady state would be where u is no longer changing. Uh, in symbols, that would be delta u equals zero. So what we'd like to do in this video is characterize that steady state. In a sense, this equation already characterizes it to some extent, but it doesn't really tell us too much. You know, Could we get a more specific equation for actually calculating that steady state? Then we could, could we apply it and get specific numbers, for, for, for instance, for our example from last video? And um, that's what we're going to do. Yes, we can do that, and we will on the next page. So reproducing what we had before, we have our definition of our steady state is delta u equals zero. Delta u means change in u, so it's u t plus one. This should say t plus one minus u t. So how much did u grow or, I guess, potentially shrink? Um, and what I'd like you to do at this point is pause the video and plug in, fill in u t plus one with our basic equation for u t plus one, and then see if you can cancel out some terms. All right, so hopefully you're back, and hopefully you canceled out some terms. If you do, you'll write out the full ut plus 1, and you'll get ut, uh, I'm going to say plus s e t minus f u t. That's just rearranging how we wrote it uh, on, in the previous video. Minus u t equal 0. And the first things we notice are that these u t's cancel. So really what we're left with is s e t minus f u t equals zero. Well, since we have two things, let's get one on each side. So we'll have s e t equals f u t. And let's see if we could simplify this even more. E and u, we know, are related because they add up to be the labor supply. In other words, let's remember that L, the total number of people in the labor force, is the number of people employed plus the number of people unemployed. And L is exogenous. Right? It's just given to us. And typically, we said for this model, for the basic version at least, um, L, will, L will be fixed. It won't change over time. Because if it changes over time, that complicates things a lot. So if we know L equals ET plus UT, that means that ET must be L minus UT. So let's try replacing E here with L minus UT. And now we have a bunch of exogenous variables, S, F, and L, and one endogenous variable, UT. So we can try to simplify and write this as ut equals something. And if you do that, you will get ut equals s over s plus f times l. So this is the equation we were hoping to get. This characterizes our steady state. If you just plug in the exogenous variables s, f, and l, you'll calculate ut, um, although really this is, this is the steady state level of u. And because this is the steady state level of u, it's not really a general equation for ut. Uh, it's not good to write it like this, because we might trick ourselves into thinking I could calculate ut for any t 
uh, with this equation, and that's not really right. So instead of writing ut, what we'll do is we'll stop using the t subscripts, because this isn't really for a time period, it's for the steady state, and we'll put an asterisk, the little star there, um, and the asterisk denotes a steady state. So this tells us u in steady state equals s over s plus f times l. And there's one more equation we'd like to get. Remember that unemployment, the unemployment rate, equals u over l. So a lot of the time people like to rearrange this a bit more and say the ue rate in steady state equals u star over l, which is based on the equation above, just s over s plus f. And it's actually probably a little more common to use this equation for calculating the natural rate of unemployment than for calculating the, the number of people unemployed. So let's apply these equations. Last video we had an example where we were calculating unemployment for different time periods and we had a separation rate of 10%, so S is 0.1, a job finding rate of 50%, so F is 0.5, and we had a total labor force of 10 people, which is kind of small, but whatever, it's a nice round number. So we can calculate the steady state we're headed towards um, by plugging in, we get U star is gonna be 0.1 over 0.1 plus 0.5, whoops, not 0 0.05, 0 0.5, and then times L, so times 10. And you plug that in and get 1.667, which I don't remember if you know if you remember the videos from last video, the numbers from last video, but it, it did look like we were headed in this direction. We started at 5 and then 3 and then I think 2.2 .2 or something, 1.8. It does look, does look like this is a reasonable number for where we were, where we were headed. We also calculate the steady state unemployment rate we were headed towards. That'll just be 0.1 over 0.1 plus 0.5. And you put that into the calculator and get 0 0.1667, so about 16%. That's a pretty high unemployment rate, but it makes sense because we said, hopefully you remember, that this S of 0.1, this would be, if these time periods are a month, this would be saying each month 10% of people lose their jobs. And um, that's probably not right. That, that's way too high. So because the separation rate is really high, the unemployment rate is really high in this example, but it's not, it's not realistic, obviously. So you got some practice calculating steady states. Hopefully you feel more comfortable with dynamic models. You're now, familiar, uh, you're now confident using a law of motion, calculating future values, using a steady state equation to calculate steady state values. And overall, you're comfortable with this notion of um, a dynamic model where there's variables that have different values in different time periods.